almost every civilization, tribe, or society on Earth bears witness in ancient records to great floods, holocausts of fire, global famine, and devastating life-ending ages which saw the Earth held hostage to generations of nothing but ice. Many of these same tribes embraced advanced knowledge of mathematics and the stars, which can only be explained as concepts passed down to them from some still greater civilization, now lost in antiquity. My younger brother has always had one dream in life. To be a professional baseball player. But the gods aren't always kind. Or fair. Two fatal minutes without oxygen at birth would forever alter every waking moment of his life. Unless I could do something about it. And that was my dream in life as a geneticist. And what I didn't know is that even now, at this very moment, events were taking place thousands of miles away which might make my brother's miracle possible. U.S. scientists sent to the South Pole were jolted by a 9.5 earthquake, which sent the geography of Antarctica crashing back to primordial configurations. Suddenly, exposed in the face of a cliff, was an immense cavern. its depths, the scientists were startled to find a perfectly preserved human, flash frozen in time. His carbon dating is off the charts. Oldest human ever found. He looks more like Darth Vader than a caveman. There is a problem I can't explain. His clothing is synthetic. Are you telling me that we've got a prehistoric man wearing designer clothing? But I can only think of one explanation for why a man millions of years old is wearing futuristic clothing. Look, if you're going where I think you're going, don't. There's no way of getting a one-way ticket out of Washington faster and coming up with a flying saucer theory. So until you find an answer, it doesn't have Greyhound bus written all over it, we need a news blackout. All right, is that understood? Yes, sir. On my last visit to Antarctica, our research team discovered a giant mastodon. So well preserved was this extinct animal that undigested marabells were found in the beast's stomach. Now, can someone tell me what is wrong with this picture that I have presented? <laughs> yes, Miss Moore. Both mastodons and marabells were indigenous to warm climates. Quite right. So what would be the explanation for them being found in an iceberg? Antarctica must have at one time had a temperate climate. All right, so can anyone think of a scenario which would alter a climate from temperate to sub-zero overnight? Why does it have to be overnight? If she said the Mary Bells were undigested, that means that whatever did happen, happened suddenly. Any theories? Antarctica moved. 
An entire continent moved. And the Earth's surface is not locked to the Earth's core, but it's made up of tectonic plates, which shift around thousands of miles due to the Earth's gravitational and rotational poles. Some of those planet alternating shifts could happen quite suddenly. So the land located at the South Pole could have at some time been far, far away and a cradle of civilization like Plato wrote about. Are you saying Antarctica is the lost continent of Atlantis? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just a home for one giant mastodon and a field of golden marabells. All right, we'll discuss this more tomorrow. Thank you so much. Dr. <laughs> Carter. Yes. Well, you made an old reprobate feel like a schoolboy again. <laughs> Some, uh, Helen Hollingsworth. National security. To what do I owe this honor? That field trip, where you found the mastodon, you did the autopsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I try to divide my time between the field work and teaching. The Indiana Jones of genetic archaeology. <laughs> uh -huh, and that's just what we're looking for down in San Diego. The world's best genetic detective. We're going to show you something that's highly classified. His existence is not to be known to anyone outside your project. I feel like he could just reach out and touch my soul. He's got a message for us, and we need you to help us get it out. Handsome woman and bright. I'd like her on the project. Well, exactly what is the project? The young man claims he can make new critters from old blood cells. <laughs> Jack Ward, self-proclaimed visionary thinks he's going to change the face of medicine because they made a movie about one of his off-the-wall notions. Yeah, dinosaurs from DNA. You know, I kind of like that movie. He claims he can bring frozen cells back to life. What? He resuscitated a beetle, not a dinosaur. Will you ever bring back a beetle? No, sir. But on the other hand, there is one other factor that makes Jack Ward entirely unsuitable for our needs. He's not a team player. That's Jack Ward, seated down front. And that's his brother Andy over there on the chalk machine. The Andy! Yes, sir? Want to throw some batting practice? I haven't finished chalking the lines. You can chalk later. OK, take it around the horn. Jack, watch me! I want to be alone with this boy. Who's the kid throwing to Wally Joyner? Got an arm like Koufax. Whenever we got a flamethrower scheduled to pitch against us, I bring this kid in. A lot of guys can see some white heat. Are you serious? <laughs> Would I kid and form a player like yourself turn hot shot announcer? <laughs> wow, I didn't even see that one. Neither did Wally. Fine looking young fella. Yeah, he's a... He's a great kid. So how's the research going, Doc? I understand you're interested in something called cell retrieval. Hollingsworth is my name. Al Hollingsworth. Hey, hot dog, use two hands. Mr. Hollingsworth. I don't know what this is about, but I set this time aside to spend it with my brother. Now, if there's some reason for us to be in touch later, let's make it later, huh? What the heck is this kid doing only throwing batting practice? I mean, he looks faster than Nolan Ryan. Oh, watch. Andy! I'm signaling him to throw a curveball. He broke while he's bad. Yeah, the kid's always doing that. Can't throw a curve. Can't read a sign. This is what I got to do to get a curve. Andy! He doesn't have much of an attention span, either. Don't remind me. I'm leaving you this envelope. It contains highly classified tissue studies. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. Look, the work that you're doing on your brother, it interests me. I'm sure you're going to be calling me once you've taken a glance at these studies. 
You'd be doing yourself a disservice and your brother by not at least looking at these. Again, I'm sorry for the interruption. The kid's got a great arm. I hadn't been able to bring myself to trust government-sponsored medicine. Not since my brother's accident at birth, which took place in a military hospital. Still, if something were presented to me which offered any hope of helping Andy, I would be hard-pressed to walk away. The spitball and all other unorthodox pitches were finally ruled illegal and abolished in 1920. Mm. Although special provisions were made to allow each team to name two spitball pitchers for the remainder of the 1920 season. Don't even think about it. <laughs> and anyway, Andy, we should get your teeth brushed and get you into bed, okay? Come on. Let's go. Andy, I may be changing labs soon, and I might be getting some animals. What will you do with them? See if I can make them a little stronger, maybe smarter. You can even watch from time to time. <laughs> Jack. Jack, did you trade a Mike Piazza for a rookie McManus? Mantle's a Hall of Famer, bub. His rookie card is very, very valuable. I'd never do it without telling you first. I know you wouldn't. You know, I'll be a rookie of San Diego if it gives me the chance to play. Do you think they will? Well, I, you know, Andy, I, I think we have to work on a few more of the fundamentals still. Like only playing one position at a time. I can do that. <laughs> I know you can. I know you can. Good night, kid. I love you. I love you, Jack. Jack! Piaz is batting 323, and, and Mantle doesn't even play. Go to sleep, silly. Your Iceman is humanoid, not alien. I believe he's from an older branch of the humanoid family, a distant cousin, if you will, whose now extinct tribe would appear to have evolved beyond us both mentally and physically. Before I try to figure out if that's good news or bad, tell me how you know all this. For starters, at 300 plus years of age, he shows no evidence of disease or degenerative aging. It would appear that his species eradicated disease as we know it. Now this, this is the real interesting part. His brain is 20% larger than ours with an expanded cerebral cortex and far, far more complex network of synapses, meaning heavy duty brain circuitry. One must conclude that our Iceman developed the capacity to utilize 80 to 90% of his brain as compared to a mere 10% we utilize. It's a lot of head muscle. A human with his brain operating at full capacity would be almost godlike. I'll join you on two conditions. If I'm successful reconstituting the living DNA from your source, I alone control all the testing. What's the other condition? We agree that there will never be any testing on humans whatsoever. Oh, Doc, it seems to me the whole point of your life's work has been bringing dead brain cells back to life. Now, you can't tell me it's because you're hell-bent on raising smarter rats. The fact is, the technology is almost at hand to replicate an entire human being from a single cell. Now, if I provide you with that cell, I want your assurances that it's not going to be misused in some human cloning project. On that, you have my word. That boy's gonna make the difference. Well, if you're so sure of that, why not tell him about the source of the DNA, the existence of the Iceman? Because <laughs> any leaks that the U.S. government might be working on a way to turn out smarter, stronger, superhuman beings to scare the hell out of people. Yeah, but you told Dr. Carter. That's because she needs to know. He doesn't. This is impossible. To get human DNA to look like this, you need one of two things. Either a friend in the cartoon business or another million years of evolution. What is this, a hoax? Not Hartley. And what's the source of this DNA? We'll get to that in due time. Right now, we need your fix on what we may have found. 
I've examined the tissue that you gave me. It's represented by this strand rising up here. Now, what's remarkable about this strand is that it contains approximately 100 larger and more complex genes than found in modern man. And many of these genes are known to be important in brain function, that is, uh, intellect, motor function, coordination, etc. Additionally, this is a computer-generated genetic tree using the differences in DNA sequencing to show modern man's relationship to the great apes. This black line represents the development of those samples. As you can see, he's way beyond all other species. The implications of this additional genetic development are staggering. Staggering enough to get you to come to work with us? Work intended to accomplish what? I think that's pretty obvious. To bring those cells back to life. Sorry, I don't think I quite understand. You don't intend that Dr. Ward and Dr. Carter work together? You're gonna set up and administrate two separate projects and see that neither knows the other exists. Well, then your agreement with Dr. Ward about human testing... ...applies to his project, not hers. But it's likely that his project, given his talent and experience, will progress much faster. Not with you in there. <sighs> Alan, with all due respect, what must you think of me? I'll admit to not being a big fan of Ward's, but to ask me to blatantly steal his work? Oh, Charles, we don't use words like that in government. We use words like precautionary backup and protective redundancy. As to what I think of you, that should be obvious. I've got you riding around in a town car. He's on foot. DNA is the code of life and what might appear to be seemingly insignificant variations in a single strand of DNA, in fact determine the radical difference between a life form evolving into a human or a dinosaur, or in the case of our project, the difference between a primitive man and a possible super species of human being. Still no signs of life, Doctor. Unfortunately, this may be one of those cases where dead is dead. The principle of reviving something frozen or dormant has been proven. Oh, yes, the journals made quite a fuss over your 100-year-old beetle. The beetle wasn't important, but its capacity to resume functions after being frozen for 100 years may change the face of medicine. Applying the same principles to humans, there's no reason why we can't revive brain cells or reconstruct spinal cords. It would certainly help to know under what conditions the cells were frozen. One thing that I do know is that the problem is not with the tissues. What's left? The catalyst into which we're injecting the DNA. It might be hostile. So it's the soil, not the seeds. Exactly. I think it's time to get a little more radical. A new host environment. Combining methylene and silicone. Oh my God. Yes! What is it? Uh, What's happening? Something dormant for a million years returns to life. You did it. No, we did it. <laughs> oh my. Okay, I need a print of this immediately. Right here. We have live cells. What happens next? He plans a slow, conservative testing program utilizing rodents. Ward's a principled man. Hmm. You, on the other hand, aren't burdened by such things. Greed will win this horse race. This is hopeless. Everything indicates a positive life response and then suddenly nothing. It just stops. It's as if the cells are being suffocated or poisoned. May I suggest something? Please. Okay, Professor. Let's go. Okay. 
let's go. The highly evolved DNA that we've injected is now sending out coded messages to every cell in his body. It takes time for it to be deciphered and then translated into action. Oh. This is phenomenal. I don't I don't know where we'd be without this new catalyst you came up with. Now that's what I'm here for. Thank you for such a love. Mm. <laughs> the professor is now completing the maze at four times his original speed in as many hours. We are clearly on the threshold of medical history. Are they gonna let me play, Jack? Of course they'll let you play. Don't forget your glove. And don't forget the patch. <laughs> I'm learning to hit the ball really far. I bet I can hit it a mile. Well, that's good, Andy, but distance isn't everything. You gotta learn to run the bases in the right order. I know that. Now, <laughs> come on, kid. Let's go. We kick butt this week. First one drops an easy out dies. Hey, fellas. Oh, no. Looks like we got a good turnout. Yeah, more than we need. All right, listen up, everyone. I base this week's lineup on last week's performance, or lack thereof. Jim, I've been working with Andy all week. And I, and I promise you, I, I got no place to put him. Come you know, on, Jim. I don't have to start in. Look, you two are both new to this program. What you don't understand is last year these guys cleaned our class. It's payback time. Right, but as I understand the rules, you need two women on the squad to qualify? We got two women. Oh, you won if I leave. Oh, come on, Meyer. Let the kid play. Look, let me be blunt. As Andy's doctor under our generous NSA health plan, I can tell you that the best he'll ever be capable of is synchronized drooling. Rules are rules. If I walk, you forfeit. Right field, Andy, and give him hell. Hey. All right. Andy, Andy, right field, right field. He been ambushed. Ah, uh, hell, what difference does it make? We're gonna lose. Who cares if it's by five runs or 50? Come on, let's play ball. Excuse me. Yeah. That was very nice of you, thank you. Uh, I'm a sucker for great legs. <laughs> we haven't been introduced, I'm Jennifer Carter. Jack Ward. Of Yale University fame. Well, oh, we geneticists have to stick together. You're a geneticist? Mm -hmm. I've read all your papers on cell repair. You know, I even tried your technique on cell nucleus removal and substitution. <laughs> I think they ripped you off. It's the basis for all the cloning activity in sheep and God knows what else. Well, it's the what else the world should be worried about. Yeah, I, you know, I would really, really like to talk to you about that. I like that. I got it! I got it! It's all mine! Jack, I got it! I saw it. It's a great catch. Four seconds. That's more than three times the speed in less than four hours after injection. May I uh, suggest we move on to primates? Uh, just wait a minute. I mean, don't don't you think that's pushing it? This project isn't about raising the intelligence of rats. So good. Thank you.
current phase of testing has concluded on the test rats with astonishing results. Their measurable intelligence has quadrupled since we began. Still, I must proceed with caution. Possible early warning signs have begun to appear in the professor. I believe I must now stop and give his fragile system time to adjust to the powerful changes taking place. Three days ago, Mr. Jaggs communicated his first word. Today, he constructs meaningful sentences without prompting. This achievement goes well beyond the scope of anything ever before attempted with a primate. This is phenomenal. And you know, with things going so well, I was, uh, I was thinking uh, maybe we should take Saturday off. Do a little sailing. Oh, you know, I'd love to, but uh, I have a meeting with the. Well, you might know him, Jack Ward. Jack Ward. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, very well. How do you two? Um, mm -hmm. Well, we met at a softball game, uh, but I've always been a great admirer of his work. Oh. Yeah, well, listen, you know, if you, if you want to come, I'm sure he wouldn't mind since you oh, know each other. I don't think so, but give him my best. All right. Thank you. You're such a love. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Very Andy. Nice. <laughs> How did it happen? Andy. Oxygen deficiency at birth. It was a military hospital. Poorly maintained equipment, inexperienced personnel. A few seconds of neglect he'll be paying for for the rest of his life. You too. I mean, I know about the kind of job opportunities you have to pass up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Genetic repair is a, it's a rewarding field. I would have gone into it with or without Andy's problems. So I assume that the work you're doing has some potential for Andy? <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Keep forgetting we're not allowed to talk about her work. I mean, they'd have you believe that you'd go to jail for divulging your own parking space. Yeah, I know. As long as we're breaking the rules. Now, if that's illegal, I'm prepared to pay the fine. Forget it. She's not here to pamper you today. I said, forget it! She's with her boyfriend. Hmm? That's where she is. Doing God knows what to the son of a bitch. Okay. Here's your reorder, Doctor. Thank you. Do you want to take the other one, too? Other one? Oh, excuse me. It's not your lab. It was a methylene silicone that fooled me. Well, that's what I'm here for. I, I ran out unexpectedly. Yeah, well, we never made it up for anyone but you. Lab 14 billion three. Knock it off. for Dr. Carter or Dr. Witzer? Somebody up here right now. The chemical compounds I used were of my own making. The fact that they were on special order to some other lab in this NSA-sponsored village meant that something was very wrong. Can I help you? Yes, I'm, I'm here to visit Lab 14. 
Well, if you're not expected, you're gonna need some additional clearance. Hi. You can go right this way, please. Jack. <laughs> well, this is a surprise. What are you doing here? I just learned we have similar chemical preferences. Well, you knew we were compatible. Well, our labs certainly are. I tell me, does, does Chuck Witzer supervise this program? Yeah, why? I need to see him, okay? I've had it with that damn monkey. Well, he only bites when you treat him badly. <laughs> you know, Chuck, you have a dark side which frightens me. Oh, well, is that why you've turned me down for dinner three times this week? Come on, we've had this conversation. I've been seeing a lot of Jack lately. <laughs> you are just pushing the rules with this relationship. I mean, these people are very serious about security. They believe lives can be at stake. Yeah, well, Jack's out there right now. He's got a security problem of his own. Jack Ward? Mm-hmm. Seemed a little agitated about our using the same chemicals he was using. Now, why is that? It's obviously not the same formula, right? No, of course it's not the same formula. You and I developed the formula together. Well, then I think you better get out there and have a conversation with him. trying to get in touch with me. Claims it's urgent. Ward and Dr. Carter are seeing each other. They may be talking. Well, it's time to tighten the reins on that boy. Or jettison him altogether. What are you telling me? Alan, I've got a chimpanzee who could pass the civil service exam. No thanks to Ward. Would you like a demonstration? Agent Burns, just leave the keys in the car. I'm to see that you get in and out in a hurry. Thank you. Okay, come on, you ungrateful little slug. <laughs> on your best behavior today, you hear me? I don't want any funny stuff out of you. I'm about to demonstrate powers of the mind unprecedented in our lifetime. A mere hint of what evolutionary possibilities await man millions of years into his future. Except that for us, that future is now. For I have harnessed tomorrow and brought it here today. He wants it, but he knows I have no intention of giving it to him. Mr. Jags, if you want it, you're going to have to make it come to you. That is it, you little bastard. I'll teach you to mess with me. Look out! Don't worry. I'll get back. Because he doesn't like bananas. Nor Dr. Witzer.
you see what Andy's doing here? Phenomenal. You're on a streak, Andy. I bet if you were willing to engage in a little sport, you could take me big time. Yeah. Watch this, Andy. I'm ready to drive a real car now. Are you aware that Witzer's giving my chemicals to Lab 14, Building 3? Witzer's in charge of a number of labs. You sure you got your labels right? I know my own chemicals, Al. Well, it sounds like you and me should meet with Witzer at this other lab you're talking about. It's, it's after 5. Look, why don't we meet first thing in the morning? Andy's got an appointment with Dr. Meyer at 9. I, I can meet you at 10. That sounds good. And I wouldn't be too concerned, Jack. I'm sure it's some kind of misunderstanding. Yeah. Go see Witzer. We got us some housekeeping chores. Hey, Andy, you know what day it is? Uh, what do you think? No, you don't want to go and do that. You might hurt yourself. Let me help you out. It's payday. You bring your San Diego Padres check with you today? Yeah. I'm taking it home to Jack. <laughs> Why don't you let me cash that for you? Thanks. I'll take that. If I were you, I'd be leaving. You still, Doc? We was just trying to help out. You shouldn't be left alone. Bye, Andy. Alone? Andy, where's Judd? His dad came and got him. Without offering you a ride home? I could have found it. <sighs> you knew you came here together. Why? A jerk. He's a policeman. A policeman can be jerks just like anyone else. Come on, let's go. How was your day today? Jack, I think I'm ready to drive a car. Aw, oh, Bub, I, I know you want to, but it isn't enough to be able to steer a car. You have to be able to take the written exam as well. Um, I lost the man. Maybe tomorrow we can get another. Yeah. Judd! Judd! What happened here? I, I fell off my bike. You got some nasty scrapes there. Come on, we better go tell your pop. No! I'm fine. Hey, Andy. I got some new baseball cards. You want to see them? Yeah. All right, you guys go look at the cards for an hour, and then Andy's got to go to bed, all right? Cool. <laughs> Judd's had another one of his accidents. Is he all right? No, he's banged up pretty badly. Is Mr. Reynolds here? No, I, and, I, and I have no idea when he's going to be home again. Would you give him a message, please? Would you tell him this time, I'm not gonna let it go? Everything okay? I didn't say anything about getting a shot, Jack. You know how I hate needles. Andy's a little unhappy about getting his flu shot. Ah, well, it's better than getting the flu. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Sure. Oh, 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 listen, I'm sorry about that game the other day. Oh, it's just a game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll be seeing you. See ya.
Concerns about the chemicals that were mistakenly delivered to uh, Dr. Carter's lab. That was entirely my fault. I've been ordering ahead for a number of projects, and apparently I mixed up the labs. So I'm, I'm sorry if there was any confusion. Well, I, I guess that's that then. Just a simple misunderstanding. All this to keep from replacing someone we don't even need? We have ways of controlling Dr. Ward. Jack. Jenny. We need to talk. Something's very wrong. I'd say that Tommy and the fire was suspicious. They promised me a tour. No, it's, it's worse than that. Mr. Jaggs didn't die in the fire. He had a broken neck and abrasions, and that cage wasn't his. I think something happened away from the Institute. What is it? I know that car. He followed me out of here last night. Look, it, it looked like the same car. Jenny, are you using those chemicals that were delivered yesterday, the methylene silicone formula? Of course we're using it. It's critical to our work. Witzer told me that they were delivered by accident. Look, I didn't devise that formula for working on primates. If that's what you've been doing, we got a serious problem here. Jenny, I need you to tell me exactly what you've been working on. All right, but well, we can't talk here. Just pick a place that we can meet tonight. Make it public and loud. All right, uh... The, the, the Lotus Club, 8 o'clock. And I might have to bring in. I'd like that. Okay. Appreciation Day, just two days away, is the Padres' way of saying thank you for your support this season. And along with giving away this brand new Seabring convertible parked down on the first baseline, you'll get to see some of next year's hot rookie prospects like Chris Carlton, pitcher of the year in the Pacific Coast League. There you see him on the mound throwing his patented fastball, clocked at well over 100 miles an hour. Hey, boss, you promised me a hitter for Chris to strike out. What's up? Nobody likes to look bad in front of a rookie, huh? You're on deck, man. They would. You want to take some batting practice? Sure. Go get suited up. my best stuff. Hey, Mort, check the eligibility rule on non-drafted free agents, huh? The, the team says I might get to play on fan day. Hey, don't get your hopes up, Andy. No, since they already clinched the pennant, they're going to play some of the rookies to give the regulars a rest for the playoffs. They, they said I could play, too. That'd be great, Andy. I just hope you didn't misunderstand them. I don't think so. Come on, Andy, get in, get in. I forgot to signal. <laughs> How do you know about signaling? Manuel says you got a signal. Oh, Jenny must have read it to you. What else do you remember? What do you want to know? 
What, what, what did you remember the whole manual? Gosh, no. There are two pages missing. <laughs> We're not gonna go right home to bed, okay? We're gonna go out. Cool. Where are we gonna go, Jack? Nightclubbing. What's that? The nightclub is where you go to, to listen to music, and maybe dance a little. You mean with women, Jack? Yeah, Jenny's gonna come with us. Jenny, cool. She's hot. Hot? Mr. called to the office, but I left in a hurry. Look, we do have to talk. I'll try you on your cell phone later. What, what's that smell? Cool. You women really like it a lot. Well, you've got a lot on. Come on, let's go. We'll be late. Come on. Supposed to be meeting someone. There she is. Hi, Jenny. Andy, hi. It's good to see you. Jack. Hi. Hi. They're here. Right over there. Can I go see the DJ? Uh, I don't think that's such a good idea, Andy. Sure. Uh, maybe with what we need to talk about, it might be a good idea. You're right. Um, Jenny thinks it would be okay for you to. Watch the DJ. Just, just don't get in his way, okay? Cool. Okay, Jenny. Moment of truth. Witzer gave you my formula, didn't he? Look, Jack. I'm frightened. I mean, what if they can hear us? I can go to jail. No, they're the ones who are breaking the law. Okay, now they're using you to run a shadow lab while they steal my work. And now the soothing sounds of summer with the first lady of soul doing that thing she do. Does. I'd say it's time for you to switch sides, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, I guess I always wondered how an unaccredited suck up like Witzer could come up with such a brilliant suggestion. What do you need to know? Delphine's records release A0T149 in full dimensional stereo coming your way. <laughs> Things are filling in for me. Where are you getting all those numbers? From the label. You can't read a label while the record's spinning. You can? Do you know the source of the DNA you've been working with? Yeah. Oh, this nightclubbing sure is fun, Jack. Jack Ward. Jack! Jim, I tried calling you at home after I missed you at the office. Look, Jack, I did something foolish, maybe worse. We need to talk. Would you like to dance, Jimmy? Jen, he, he, he doesn't dance. Yet. I do too know how to dance, Jack. Sorry. Uh, Jack, listen, I'll take him on the dance floor. You okay. need to talk. Come on. Cool. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm kind of busy right now. Not too busy for this, Jack. Andy's life may depend on it. I watch a lot of dancing movies. Yeah? Like what? Dirty dancing. I've watched Saturday Night Fever three hundred and four times. Wow. <laughs> I also watch Pulp Fiction. Uma Thurman, she's hot. Oh, now, what's this got to do with Andy? Did something turn up on his test? Look, I'll be home in ten minutes. Meet me there. Uh-oh. What is it? I think they followed me. Who followed you? You know, what you're doing is really, really good, Andy. But, um, this is what they call slow dancing. 
shoot. It's okay. I, I think you may like slow dancing. Just, um, put your arm around me like that. Just rock back and forth. Meyer, maybe, maybe it's all right. Maybe it's just the police. Cool. No, just give them the ticket and wait, all right? Go, 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 go. What's going on? I'll tell you later. Okay. I like us going out with Wind and Jack. That's great, Bob. Can you tell me what's going on now? Meyer was in trouble. He wanted me to meet him at his place, but I'm betting they never let him get there. That's Meyer's car. That's Meyer. Oh my God. What do you think happened? I think that they killed him. And I think I heard him do it. dangerous for all of us. Even Andy, according to Meyer. Why can't we just tell Hollingsworth what we know? Because we know too much to be safe. And too little to beat them. Jenny, I need you to show me the Iceman. something that you can help me with. If anyone comes out and uses that elevator, I want you to keep down and out of sight, then walk over to the payphone and call my pager. Here's the number. 555-0141. Very good. And your cell phone is 555-0173. Good. Now, and I your fax you to... number is... Andy, just, just listen to me, okay? When we get out of the car, you lock the door. Just press this button, okay? Okay. I'm not a kid. darkest secrets.
incredible. It's their car. We got them. Carter just accessed the vault. What civilization has he found? The world of the fourth sun. The fourth sun? Mm hmm. The ancient Aztecs held that our Earth was divided into periods of time they referred to as suns. Each one saw civilization rise from the dust only to be destroyed by sudden cataclysms of fire, flood, or ice. This is the first tangible proof we have that previous civilizations existed with technologies beyond ours, and, and they want to keep it a secret. Why? How can they justify it? Greed? This has nothing to do with national security. If a pill that enhances your sex life is worth billions of dollars, imagine what a pharmaceutical company would pay for a drug that promises you a perfectly healthy life for 300 years. Or pay to keep it off the market. Exactly. This guy gives us all we need to go public. It's Andy, come on, come on. Time and the place. Good. I'll be there. Looks like you're holding the road a lot better, Bob. Yeah, Jack. Better than that. Listen. I gotta go out for a while. Jenny said she'd come over and take you to the ballpark, okay? Cool. Right. I told you, never trade baseball cards with anybody again. Especially with that big imbecile downstairs. Daddy's my friend. Don't talk back to me! I'm going down the borders. When I come back here, those baseball cards better be here. Is my meaning clear? say goodbye. I'm going to visit my grandmother in Minnesota. You're running away. He hit you. No. He hit you hard. I never told you that. I never told anybody. So how could you know? I want you to have my Mike Piazza before I sell the collection. You're still on the wall? raise enough money to get to Minnesota. But you got cards that your dad collected as a kid. I, who can afford to pay for them? Eddie and Nick at the arcade. Eddie and Nickel cheating. The only ones that don't give me the money is not calling my dad. I'm your best friend. I hope I get to see you again. Wait. I'll take you as far as the arcade. Jack. 
Jack Ward's voicemail. Please leave your message. Hi, Jack. It's Andy. Judd's running away and I'm going with him. It's a good idea meeting like this gives us a chance to talk. What happened to Meyer? Well, the medical report from Bethesda said he died of a heart attack. He was talking to me when the police pulled him over. Except that they weren't the police and he wasn't having a heart attack. The fire in Dr. Carter's lab was staged to cover Witzer using my formula on primates, which at this stage of the research was unconscionable. I was under the impression that the project was doing real well. I'm not going back to work until I know the truth. What are you? What are you building? Super soldiers for a super army? I'm going public with the Iceman. That wouldn't be wise. Well, that's the real threat, isn't it, huh? We let him out of the bag, your people lose control of the technology. No, the real threat is what happens to Andy if something happens to you. I'm taking Andy and I'm getting out of here now. Too late for that, Jack. See, you created a formula and we're using it. We're using it in ways I thought would make you feel a little more grateful. What's that supposed to mean? Have you been too busy playing detective not to notice the improvements in Andy? That's what Meyer was trying to tell me. That's why you killed him, you bastard! I'm not gonna let you get away with this! If you value Andy's life, be very careful what you do next. Explain later, please. Just, just find him and get him to the ballpark. I'll meet up with you as soon as. Well, as soon as I take care of something. Okay. Can you tell me the places he's most likely to go? for my baseball cards. You still got that Babe Ruth and the Lou Gehrig? Yeah, I even got a new Mike Piazza rookie. Well, then, I might be able to give you 500. This Babe Ruth alone is worth that. You're not a card store, but he ain't there. I suppose your old man don't know you're selling, huh? Dr. Ward didn't expect. Well, he said nothing of the kind to me. I'm sure he didn't find it necessary. Early formulas are extremely dangerous. Yeah, for weak, undeveloped rats, not people. Kind of generous. I'm gonna give you seven hundred and fifty dollars. Huh? And you can play me for another seven hundred and fifty. You mean if I win, I get fifteen hundred? What if I lose? I get it all for nothing. Zip. Zero. Judge, no. Don't do it. Dr. Ward's lab. Yes, Doctor. I put in a call to let you know the professor died. Have you seen Dr. Witzer? It's urgent that I find him. He's right here. Yes, Jack. What is it? You idiot! Look, Jack, do you know what you've done? How much formula did you give to Andy? I, I didn't give him anything. You stay right where you are. Look what we got 
here. There's Mike Piazza, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig. <laughs> I'll beat your score. Andy, what are you doing? Come on, let's go. Stay out of this, Judd. Wait, wait a minute, let me get this straight. Are you willing to ride your entire collection on beating my new house record? Winner take all? Plus the 750 you promised him if you want. As they say, allow me. But you saved my life. Now I can go to Minnesota. I wish you wouldn't go. I know Jack could make things better. Talking to my dad just makes him matter. But you're gonna miss Fan Day, and I'm gonna get to play. Is that a real game? Yeah. Maybe you could go to Minnesota after. You're not going anywhere. This isn't over. Yes, it is. Big fella. Dad, what are you doing with that gun? It's my friend. Well, there's a very unhealthy interest in younger boys. Excuse me, um, have you seen um, the two kids tall, uh, Andy, Judd? Uh, don't worry. I won't need this to teach him to stay away from you. Oh, no, please don't! I'm part for you too, Judd! Ah. 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 It's wrong to hurt people, Mr. Mount. Especially people you ah. love. Shut up, Lyle! Ah, ah, ah. We don't want to hit him, Mr. Reynolds. Not ever again. Never again. Ah. I gotta go now, Mr. Reynolds. You can get up now. It's been a long time since you've taken Jad to a baseball game. I know you'd like to take him. I want to take him. You want to watch a game, son? Send me to find you. Take you to your game. He's coming, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be there as soon as you can. Good. Winter! 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 How do 
are the Kabayum food. Like a beautiful ice cream cone. Oh. Andy, are you funny? Get a grip, sweetie. We got a game to play. Like a sleeping giant. Trip. Looks like you've got enough methane to vaporize an aircraft carrier. No one ever said you weren't bright, Doctor. It's a little naive. Not anymore. I know you gave him my formula to inject Andy. It was their idea to earn your gratitude and lasting commitment. I told them we don't need it. You were wrong. Look, just because a rat died doesn't mean a human will. How much did you give him, Witzer? How much? Enough to turn him into a biological descendant of the Iceman. His life wasn't yours to risk. Well, I guess the next best thing to being the great Dr. Ward is turning you into the late Charles Witzer. When the methane gas vaporizes you, Jack, that ring and watch is all they're gonna find. Watching our research in action. There's been a fire in the sub basement vault. Lord. Get over there. These people had destroyed the Iceman. They injected my brother, and they tried to kill me. With everything that was happening, it was time to grab Andy and get out. Director Hollingsworth wants to talk to you. Trailing two to nothing, it will probably be the final inning for the Padres this season, and it looks like Steve Norcroft is going to step in there with two on and one out. Andy! Give a stick, you're up next. One. You know, Steve's got some great speed, Ken, in the Pacific Coast League. He led all the league with 50 stolen bases. And it looks like Andy Ward may pinch hit unless Norcroft hits into any kind of double play. And here's a story for you. When Andy Ward comes to bat, it'll be his first trip to the plate in any form of organized ball of any kind anywhere in the world. A virtual unknown, he was discovered on the Padre ground crew. <laughs> I'd say he redefines the term rookie. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. Jack! <laughs> this should be the happiest day of your life when you almost missed the whole show! You son of a bitch! You used my brother as a guinea pig! Give your brother a chance to be something other than a rain man, and he tried to kill me. The formula is flawed, Hollingsworth. The rats are dying. He says, don't talk to me about rats. I mean, the proof of what we got is out there on the field. 
we have a few setbacks, we find solutions, we move on. You're out of solutions. Witcher destroyed the lab and everything he couldn't take with him. Take with him? Yeah, he's gone. Probably to go into business for himself. Selling youth and power and strength, just like you were gonna do. We're temporarily closing up shop. Let's go. Go grab Dr. Carter. Sipes, I'll wait for the brother. Take him as soon as he leaves the field, huh? Well, Norcroft couldn't get the job done, and we're down to our last out. Looks like two on, trailing by two. Young Andy Ward, an unsigned free agent, is going to get a chance for the Padres here to get this victory. Yeah, and don't forget that the rookie voted most valuable in our pregame special will draw a number awarding that fabulous Seabrain convertible to some lucky fan. You say something, rookie? Oh, I'm worried about Jack. Let's play ball, son. Let go of me? No, I... Are you going to let him argue every pitch? I'm... What are you trying to do? Make me look like a fool or something? I'm worried about Jack. Look, Andy, let me tell you something. I went way out on a limb with management to choose you as one of the rookies and pass up everybody else in this system. Now you gotta come through here, all right? You gotta concentrate, and you gotta make sure you look at that bitch, and you gotta hit that ball as hard as you can. If you do that, you can go and help Jack and Jenny all you want. Do you understand that? Now get in there. I'd ever cooperate with you people after what you've done? Jack, we're the only chance you got to fix whatever went wrong with that serum. Either way, we got Andy. He's got what we all need coursing in his veins. Could you tell him to pitch it in in a hurry? You won't even see this one. You could have killed us all. Take him into custody. Leave him alone. It's me you want. Ah, no, Jack. It's me they want. Why is it? You always need protection, Andy. Now you got the whole government looking out for you. No. Andy, these are federal agents. I wouldn't provoke them. Andy, don't resist. They'll hurt you. You don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. What's going on? What's happening? 
ね。What you started. You've got nothing to work with until you get your hands on which all you want is what's in Andy's bloodstream. We're national security, Jack. Come on, Hollingsworth. You're in business for yourself. I doubt if anybody outside of your vicious little circle has ever even heard of me. Or the Iceman. You can run, but you can't hide. to say anything, Jack. I know. No, no, Andy, I don't think you can know about this. But I do. You were worrying about it all night. You don't have to. Yesterday, I played for the Padres. It was the best day of my life. The very best. I'm gonna make things right for you. I promise you. You always make things right for me. And things are already better than before. We can help each other now. Hey, Denny. Do you know the only two brothers in Major League history who play together and combine for over 40 pitching wins in a single season? Uh-uh. Dizzy and Paul Dean. No, I didn't know that. But I guess brothers have always been more important in your life than in mine. See, I never had a Jack. Well, you got one now. And an Andy, too. <laughs> Andy and I had been bonded together since childhood by blood and an act of God which made the world perceive him as the lesser of two sons. Now, a second godlike intervention has brought forth a blood brother, this one the descendant of an advanced world long forgotten, but bearing a gift which would forever alter the direction of our lives, if not the future of the world.